Hello, everyone. Welcome to the King of Anime podcast. Oh, wow. It's been a long time since we said that. This is the 49th edition of the King of Anime podcast, in which tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about Vinland Saga. This is a show that we covered originally on this show the last couple seasons, I believe. And then, you know, as fall got canceled, we kind of didn't cover the last 10 episodes of it, 11, something like that. And so we're here to just talk all about Vinland Saga. This is a whole spoiler cast. Uh, but I have to say, uh, I do have some co-hosts here. You may you may know them. Introduce yourselves. Oh my god, I'm back. It's me, Everything Animated. How long has it been? I feel like it's been 20 years. It's it, it's it, Time just flies on by. Three months, something like that. Oh, the chest. Oh, okay. Correct. You know, twenty years, three months. You know, they kind of blend together at this yeah. point. Exactly. Yeah, it's the same. And um, hi, I got some Sasuke, and I am almost drunk. Not there yet. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna get there yet. We're egging him on. <laughs> Every time we we mention a Thor name, he has to take a shot. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I never agreed to this. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you're you're actually Sotsky is actually drinking, like live drinking. Like by the end yeah. of this, he may say something that he'll have to make an apology video about. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to cancel me on Twitter. Hashtag cancel Sotsky. They are. <laughs> they will. And and the chat's not working correctly. I, I don't know why that is. Everything has been really weird about all everything about OBS has been weird. But this is more of a restream situation. I'm I'm not sure what happened there. Uh but if we don't get your comment, just keep commenting it. I'm sure these two will have like the actual live chats up. So uh they'll they'll know. Uh oh, and thank you, Gamma, for for loving my work. I appreciate it. But we have to talk about Vinland Saga. Vinland Saga, uh, well, uh, Sotsky locked it in for the uh, King of Anime podcast. Uh, why did you lock the show in? Uh, I locked it because it was a lot of violence. Vikings. Ah, yeah. Yeah. And good character development. And actually, I didn't know, but the mangaka is somebody who did another work I like, I really enjoy. And it's ironic because we were going originally going to do um we were going to do Nakama Club on it. It's Planet S. Oh, or Planet S, whatever you Yeah. Like he's he's the it's the same guy who does that as well. And I did oh, not wow. know that at all. I was so surprised because of course those stories are so different, but the quality for both of the series is there. High quality. For some reason, That's pretty I, much why I locked it in. For some reason, I thought Planetes was directed by a female or written by a female for some reason. I don't know why that is, but I didn't know that. That's actually really interesting. Planetes is like one of my all-time favorites in anime in general. And like, I don't talk about it because like it's so special that I just I don't really want to make a video on it. Uh, but... What were your guys' initial expectations for the series? Of course, Satsuki, yours is going to be different because you've you've read the the source, but EA yep. in particular, what was uh, what did you think about the series? Well, I mean, going into it, the only thing I knew about it was that it's it it was going to be made from the same studio that did Attack on Titan, so. I was looking forward to the animation, at least. <laughs> I heard Vikings and action and blood. and go I'm like, okay, sign, you, I'm sold. Uh, where, sign me up. Where do I, where do I watch the first episode? Bring it on, you know? So it's, uh, that's, that was my first initial response, uh, I guess, going into it, because I knew absolutely nothing about it. Didn't know it was a manga. Didn't know nothing. Yeah, uh, my I guess my initial expectations for this was essentially Sotsky said it was good, so it's got to be good. <laughs> Sotsky only recommends things I like for some reason. 
um, unless it's citrus. But even then, I have read all of citrus. <laughs> so, I it have has Sasuke really ev- ever lost in terms of a record recommendation for me? Who knows? Uh, but I, yeah, the thing that stuck out to me was what studio was doing it. Same studio that did Attack on Titan, and. I guess just like the, after watching those first three episodes, it was really, I don't know, it was really surprising to me because it, there's something that I want to compare this show to, uh, to another anime in particular, but I can't think of the name. Uh, maybe Black Lagoon. I, I can't, can't exactly remember the anime, but I, I also remember specifically actually choosing this show uh, or the, the time that we actually chose the show. Uh, when Sasuke was talking about it, I think EA, you were, you were like, "Oh, this show is gonna suck because we there's like this weird, uh, there's this weird thing that happens where we pick these Amazon shows and they and they we always typically drop them and yeah, they have one thing in common besides us always dropping them, and that's like they release the first two episodes, the first three episodes, like on day one. I think that happened to uh, Astra as well. It yeah. Astra. Yeah, yeah. And then there was that one that I picked that I'll never speak of again that involved tired trembling lollies and zombies. I I don't even remember the name of that show. Was that but, Ride uh, the D? That was, yep, that was the name of that show. Oh, yeah, that was yeah. terrible. I can't, see, I forgot all about that show until you just said that. And now I have a wave of just... God, but yeah, it. I think that's why I said it was going to suck, was because it it released the the first three episodes, and I was I was just like, this this never ever turns out good for us, and I and I think I uh, I, I was very wrong, and I'm glad I was wrong in that. Sense. Yeah, absolutely, Satsuki. As a person who read the manga, were you worried at all? Oh. Uh... Like you guys already said with Wit Studio, and of course, like Attack on Titan is one of my favorite series. So when I seen Wit Studio doing doing the uh, work, I had high expectations for it. So it was just a matter of will they just adapt everything correctly? That's the only thing I was worried about because we've seen series like Berserk, for example, or Tokyo Ghoul. You can go to a whole slew of different series. They just don't adapt what they have, even though they should be able to adapt the content. So that's the only thing I was worried about. And once I saw the first three episodes or how many came out, um, I was pretty much like relieved of all suspicions and all um, worries because it looked like they were going to do everything correctly. And by the end of it, they did. So pretty much, pretty much my expectations for it, again, were high just because of the studio that was doing it and because of how great I knew the series was. Um, as well, I mean, when, when did you guys start to really enjoy this show? Because, you know, we had these first three episodes come out and we had like to, to wait a couple weeks. Was it, did you guys start to enjoy it like later in the series or... Or were you just uh, decided from day one? Well, um, I, I guess you could say I've watched so much anime in my life that it's it takes a lot for me to be impressed. The first three episodes, though I liked them, I, I was w- waiting to see where it was going to go. Because I've seen shows before where they start out great, and then they just, they don't know, <laughs> do row yeah, Dororo is is one of those examples where it's, it was great and then it just oh ended so badly. But I want to say when um, when Thorfinn grew up and he became a badass is when I was like, okay, this is where the show is going. I you you have my attention. I'm not going anywhere. I'm watching this all the way through. <laughs> That's where I was like, okay, I I can dig this show. Um. Yeah, you know, I think it was definitely after those those the first batch, um, and then seeing is seeing Thor's get killed, 
um, at the end of that first arc was just, I was like, oh man, I'm totally in. Like, like this, like I didn't know, I, I didn't have a clue where the story was headed, but I was like, hell yeah, this is like a, this is like one of those like berserk like series where you just, you're, you're in for like a, a ride for across it doesn't happen in the span of like a week or something this is like a sprawling story with with tons of different interesting and intriguing characters uh through through years of their life and uh i was like wow this this is just some of the most compelling stuff i've seen in a long time what did you think satsuki okay so this is a instance where reading a manga is different from the anime because the first chapter of the manga started off a lot different from the anime first chapter of the manga pretty much had thorfinn already grown up and then we went into when he was younger so uh... from the first yeah from the first chapter i was already invested especially since it was a longer chapter i, I want to say it was like 70 something pages so it was a lot of content to get through so when I already seen grown up Thorfinn just you know being a badass doing what he doing what he does, um I was already into the story and I wanted to see more from it. But I guess like like you said, the universal turning point or like where everybody is latching onto the series and they're thinking like this is going to be a good series is Thor's death because I think that kind of set or I don't want to say set the stakes. Because, of course, like, Thorfinn isn't going to die, but it kind of just, it kind of just shook you. And I think with that scene in particular, um, you know, people could take away that scene and just, it just realize, like, how much, what this series could bring you. Like, it could hit you with an unexpected turn. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was really nice. Definitely unexpected. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I was actually really surprised by how much anime original content was there in the beginning because you talked about it some. I remember maybe it was in the podcast itself, but I was very surprised that they actually went and they added stuff into it. And like that just goes to show it, it isn't just an adaptation. It was something that the people who worked on this were like, yeah, that's like we can make this even better. And I don't know if the, the original mangaka had any involvement with the production of this. I'm sure he had a... I'm sure they went to him a couple times and they were like, do the strands of the hair on this character look good? And he was probably like, does my paycheck look good? <laughs> He's like, put that extra zero at the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was pretty much like... um, I And I may be wrong, so like, don't take my word for it, but I, I'm pretty sure... Once Thorfinn or once Thor's died, and we seen like little Thorfinn angry and whatnot. From that point on, we saw him growing up. So what the anime added was those little scenes of him hunting and when he tried to challenge Asgard. That that was anime original content. And that was really appreciated because, yeah, they didn't really show us uh, Thorfinn's progression and you know him learning how to be a Viking. You kind of just saw it happen after the time skip. Yeah. That's really cool. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I especially, that's one of the episodes that comes to, to memory a lot when I think about this show, because it was, uh, it was that I think that episode as well showed like how harsh living was for, for, for little Thorfinn. And as well, the the links, he kind of, or not the links, but how he changed from there on out, and how in that that episode in particular, it showed how like like the world is is really harsh, and Thorfinn is gonna probably have to do things that that he doesn't want to do, especially traveling with Vikings. Yeah. Damn Vikings. <laughs> uh but uh speaking of Vikings, there's there's the former Viking Thors, who is Thorfinn's father. What did what did you guys think about Thors? 
he kind of, I mean, though he was just barely in the series, you know, when you look at it as a whole, he left a very lasting impression by the fact that this man was extremely feared by a lot of people. And he was this powerful warrior. And yet he threw all of that away for a woman. And, you know, it just shows you his, uh, his character and, you know, he grew, grew a family together and whatnot. It's just, <laughs> it's almost like the power of love can just change even the mightiest of warriors is almost what it's saying thor's got a, a copy of uh, the power of love by huey lewis in the news <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> that's the power of love <laughs> many people won't know what that reference is but uh, it's a great song go check it out uh but no yeah that's actually uh you bring up you bring that up but yeah he he kind of gave that whole life up because he 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 had this family he kind of missed out on on yilva a little bit uh there was that very humorous scene where uh thor's it's like a baby battle and helga's like no you're you're gonna name this baby and uh thor's is like i'm just gonna name him after my mom <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was really but humorous. It's just crazy, though, because Thor's, he could have been like a king. You know, he could have been like everyone respected him and everyone would have feared him. They would have laid down their life for this man. And it just goes to show you just how much he just didn't want to be a part of that life. Because some people are just, you know, this, the minute they get into it, they're they're there to the day they die. Right. Not Thor, so he's he could have he could have gone a lot farther than and, and it's weird because you know we uh, we just never <laughs> we, we, though we saw him in in all these uh, like I said three episodes four episodes however many episodes he was in I can't remember the exact number but he left a very lasting and yeah four or four and a half something including flashbacks and whatnot. It was just that much of a lasting impression, an impression, and his name just continued to be brought up throughout the series. Just he was that influential. I think Thor's is also kind of relatable in in a lot of ways, especially sure. for a lot of family men as well. Who, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't say family men as in just men. I mean men and women. Because it goes both ways, of course, where sure. they maybe have this drive to to achieve something great or do something that, that they'll be remembered for or just whatever goal it may be. And they may just be ready to give that goal up very selflessly to to pursue something with, with someone they love, you know, and yeah. of course that that, that kind of comes later for Thor's, but I... I I think that's something a lot of people um, can appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. When I think of Thor's, um, I draw parallels to Ned Stark from Game of Thrones. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, <laughs> and the reason why is because they're both honorable. And a lot of people, if you watch Game of Thrones and you get through the first season, a lot of people call Ned Stark stupid. And they... And I think that is a baseless argument because I think they're not stupid again. They're just honorable. They're not naive. Like with, with, with Thor's, with his death, how he fell to Aslad, he got shot by the arrows. He wanted to duke it out, which Aslad abided. He, you know, he abided by those rules and he obligated them. But, um, you know, ultimately when he was about to, you know, take the L, he decided, okay, yeah, you know, shoot him up. But that's the thing about Thor is he'll he'll live by that by that cold, and that's something he instilled to Thorfinn. Because as much as Thorfinn, and I, I'm pretty sure we'll talk about talking about talk about it more. As much as Thorfinn kind of favors Aslak more than Thor's, um, the one thing he kept from Thor's, the one lesson he kept is that honor that honor 
because he ne like Thorfinn never tries to kill Aslad um like in his sleep. Or well not he, he did try it, but he just, you know, pulled the plug on it. He never went through with it because of, you know, his father's words and his teachings. That's a cowardly move and he would never do that. So the honor Thorfinn kept albeit to a lesser degree. And I think that's a big part of his character and like the tragedy that occurred because basically what Vinland was telling us is you could stay true to your word. You could be honorable. You could be a good guy, but that can also get you killed. Yeah. And yeah, it's just like a reality type of situation. Honorable to a fault. Right. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's a, a an awesome thing about Thor's is he he kind of just he passes on that knowledge to Thorfinn. And speaking of Thorfinn, he he obviously seems very lost by after his father has died. He's he's kind of spiraling. I would describe much of this 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 uh the series of is just everything after Thor's dying is just just Thorfinn just sh- just shot down in flames just just nose diving. What do you guys think about Thorfinn and his progression throughout this series? Uh to be honest, when it comes to Thorfinn, it's a very tragic story when you think about it. You know, loses his father when he's just five, grows up, and all he knows is killing. And doesn't even see his parent, well, his mom and his older sister. Probably not even in the, well, when he was little, it was probably in the back of his mind. But the older he gets, the more he starts to forget. And all he is, all he is, is just fueled by rage and revenge. And (laughs) <laughs> that's that's literally all that fuels him and keeps him going and he knows one of these days I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill Asklad with with my father's knives I'm gonna do it it's, it's gonna be these it's gonna be one of these days and wouldn't you know it on the last episode the thing that he put all most of his life into he didn't even get to do it he didn't even get to even come close to doing it so some other guy took that from him and robbed him of his fa- of what this man took from him you know Asklad took his father away and now he and now he can't even do that I mean, and that, <laughs> it's it's so so sad and it just I, I i definitely sympathize and he's had a couple of times to where he could run away from this and go back home. And even when good old Leif Erikson comes in and tries to save, I was hoping he'd get on that boat, but I knew he was going to leave. <laughs> but yeah, he, uh, though he was fueled by that at the end of the day, he did not get, he did not get what he sought out for. And I think, well, he had some flashbacks too from his father when he was even telling him, dude, you need to stop. You need to yeah. see. Yeah. That's what he said. Dude, you need to stop doing this. Go home already. It wasn't even really his father. I mean, if you look at it, like it was, it was his consciousness. It was his better sure. self. It was him saying, "Hey, like you can't do this forever. Like this can't last. This is unsustainable." Yeah, and yeah, I guess you could say it was his conscious. I, I was thinking, like you know, like maybe his father came to him in a dream and was trying to tell him and whatnot. Be that as it may, whatever you look at it as yeah it's he had all the signs of of, he could have walked away and ultimately when you think about it he could have had a better life you know he could have enjoyed being with his family he could have though yeah he would have been without his father he um yeah he he, he's uh, oh it's it's just so i feel so bad for this guy especially the last episode and now he now he's gonna go to jail or 
to be continued. What's gonna what's gonna happen to this guy? He's gonna get executed. I don't know where he's going. He's gonna get shot. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, it just gives me goosebumps thinking about the 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 play between uh, Thorfinn and Canute, and how you know you're right. This whole this whole goal, this whole thing, all of this rage. All of these these years following Asklad and doing his will was to eventually kill him. And lo and behold, his moment of uh, his his moment was taken away right in front of his eyes by Prince Canute, who who came in to not only just take his moment, but to basically use that as like a way to like make himself look good. Like it was, it became, it, it like Asklad and, and, and Knut's or well, I guess Asklad's death and, and Knut killing Asklad was like, like a play. And Thorfinn was watching the role that he was supposed to be in. Right. And I think, I mean, we, we obviously don't know by the end of the series, you know, we know he's really freaking angry about it, but, yep. <laughs> but, but I imagine that's going to eat away at him. Just the fact that he worked all of these years and sacrificed literally everything and probably a lot of himself mm-hmm. just to be able to hopefully and eventually kill the, kill the man who killed his father and get that revenge. But, he did. He never got that revenge, and now he he has to decide where he wants to go from there, and going to jail. <laughs> he's going to, going to get shot in jail. Uh, <laughs> I like Thorfinn a lot, though. I, I I think he's he comes off as this very uh, for a guy who kills a lot of people. He comes off a lot as this kind of delicate person. Which, which I think is kind of cool for his character because we see in one episode he he gets separated from Asklad's men and he goes into this village and there's this I think his mother and, and daughter uh, are just helping him out they like get a bunch of fleas out of his hair and clean his hair and and he washes up and he experiences like the warmth of like a family and. You can kind of tell Thorfinn is is at that point. He's not like. He's not. He's he's kind of like a. He's sticking out a little bit. It doesn't it doesn't feel like that's a natural place for him to be. And that's just because he's been with Vikings for lo- so long, and he, and you can tell he feels that way. Um, and of course, at the end, when that family is killed, it's it's a. He he. He basically turns all of that back off, and from there on, he's just this cold human being. And I, I just, I don't know. I really, I really think Thorfinn is. There's so many different layers to his character that I think you can kind of like uh, analyze and and, t- and discuss and talk about, and it it would just be fascinating. What do you think, Satsi? All right, this might be long-winded, but I think Thorfinn is like one of the most tragic characters in the series for a couple of reasons. First, with what you guys already talked about it with him not being able to take his revenge, but I think the revenge in itself is an indication of how tragic of a character he was because you have to think about how long he's been on a ship with people that he's just hated. It's hard to not have real human interactions, at least positive human interactions for that long and to stay sane. And you can say that he just went crazy because he kept challenging Aslag, kept losing, kept losing, kept losing. And sure, he was getting better and then you could say that he was making a breakthrough kind of, but I think in the last fight with Thorfinn and Aslag, that kind of just showed the difference between them and how as much as as strong as Thorfinn got, the hatred in of itself 
was the thing that was holding him back against Thor or against Aslad. And uh, another tragic thing about Thorfinn is the fact that he just his goal of getting revenge didn't even become a goal anymore. It was like an obsession. Yeah. It, that was the only thing he had to live for. He didn't care Very about much. his family. He had he still had a sister. He still had his mother. He still had a whole village to go back to, but he just basically disregarded that all to kill this guy who killed his father. And he in 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 route of that, he became what his father told him not to be. And you know, he killed innocent people. Yeah. Yeah, he's He's super tragic. It's sad. But still going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think you totally nail it. You nail it, Satsuki. Yeah. Totally. Like, he's... He's, uh... I feel so bad for him. Like, I really do, because, like... You can tell by the end, he's just especially after Asklad's death, it's just, you could tell he's helpless and he doesn't know right. what to do because he's been tunneled vision on this one goal. And since the goal is gone and he wasn't ever able to achieve it, it's kind of like, well, what the fuck do I do now? Like, <laughs> I mean, I can't kill this, this guy because he's dead. And what about all these feelings I, I, that I still have about this event? And about yeah. Asklad and man, it's just it's just so much for him. And yeah. being I mean, Leif Erikson even came to him when he was in prison and he was like, Hey, like we can go back. And I love that scene. I love that it's scene, scene so much because he talks about, you know, uh, basically, you know, the good the good the good days that they had when before Thorfinn became who he was and his family, uh, Helga and Yilva, and going back to that, the simpler life, the the more peaceful life, and how being around Asklad has created this, this thing inside of him that he won't ever be happy unless the man dies. And that is such just... I mean, I, put, I, I use the image all the time because it's, it's just... He's so like adorable, but when he's a kid, there's that innocent smile he has in that first or second episode when he goes on the on the ship with uh, Thor's. Like he's so excited, you know, to be out there and like be a actual Viking. Gonna kill people. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> this what? is great. Yeah, of course. You know, <laughs> we're like, wait, whoa, whoa, hold on, Thorfinn. You don't want to be a Viking, but it's it's you know it's that innocence. If he he doesn't know, like he he doesn't he doesn't know what all that entails. He just knows that these Vikings, his dad was once a warrior, a great warrior, and uh, and now he's and now all that is that innocence is is literally gone. There's no more left, and now he's now he's just kind of he's kind of like. He's directionless. I mean, he was, he technically was before, but now for sure it, it's been cemented that I think Thorfinn is, like, I, I, I think uh, in the next season, the rumored next season, I think a lot, I, I, I think you have to basically only focus on Thorfinn because he, uh, he's, he's the only character that by the end doesn't really have many answers to he was uh, he was pretty much like a husk after thor's like as soon as thor's got that the arrows put in him and he died he was just moving on command it was just like he was going through the motions just you know do ass last bidding challenge him fail rinse and repeat that was basically his life and that that's just crazy to think about because again he didn't like anybody. He wasn't friends with anyone. And even the positive interactions he had, he ruined them because he was trying to take it, take his revenge. Yeah. Can you imagine going from drinking apple juice all the time and then just you're, you're killing your first person? 
on the battlefield. <laughs> I mean, someone needs to Photoshop Thorfinn with a little juice box and in, in like a one of those metal lunch boxes, like he's going to school. Like, mm -hmm. and then like this, <laughs> it's like uh, it's like you know those images of like the young character, and then it shows like an obviously totally different person or character, and it's like this. Remember, remember, remember this person. This was them. This yeah. is them now. Yeah. <laughs> just on the right, it's just so like him just like raging. Cause that's kind of what happened. Just he do didn't, the he didn't even eleven grow year up. challenge. <laughs> like he did, it didn't even take him to grow up to do that. After as soon as he saw his father die, he was on that boat and they were like and he was just screaming, like, I'm gonna kill you and then they're like, just leave him on the boat. <laughs> He'll stop eventually. He'll cry himself out. Don't worry. Uh, well, we also have to talk about uh, Helga and Yulva, Thorfinn's family. Uh, we only see them in these first three or four episodes, uh, and then we never see them again. I I think. I feel like we will. I feel like I I feel like we have to because I don't know. I want to see them again, and since I have I do this, too. like I just want to see what they think of what Thorfinn has become. Yeah, I would like to see that reunion, kind of like in Game of Thrones, when you finally see, like, everyone's together in the first season, then everyone splits apart after Ned Stark's death. But then in the later seasons, when you see them come apart, oh, that is, those are such good good scenes and good moments. When, uh, I want to say, I'm trying to think of somewhere off the top of my head, like when Jon Snow sees Arya for the first time again. Oh, I was so happy. <laughs> I was so better. happy. If you want to make a an 80s golden age wrestling reference, Macho Man and Miss Elizabeth. <laughs> God, why, why you got to do this to me now? <laughs> I, I need a tissue. Get rid of my tissue, man. <laughs> that, was, that was really good. That was really good. But, um... Yeah, they were, like, after they found out that Thoris died, you know, Helga, mother, was obviously <clears throat> upset, as she should be. And then you have the daughter, what, Yelva? Is that her name? Yelva? Yelva is the wife's, wife, something silent in there. Yelva's, Yelva's but, awesome. Yeah. She's just like, I'm going to go milk the cows, and I'm going to throw the hay and shovel the snow. And of course, you can only keep face for so long until you know your emotions get the better of you and that's what happened to her i just like how strong yilva is in in all aspects she's emotionally strong she keeps it together she she knows that because of helga and how weak she is that no matter what like if the world ends tomorrow she has to go out and, prov and, and provide because now not only is Thor's gone, but Thorfinn's gone. And and now she's going to have to keep providing. And I like how she kind of perseveres for that. But she's also physically strong, which leads to some humorous moments in the initial episodes where uh, they're, like, getting a bunch of water from the stream. And uh, and uh, uh, Yulva just picks them both up at the same, like, these massive jugs of water or whatever they are, these vases or whatever they were. She just picks them both up. Because she's just strong, she's she's the she's, daughter of of Thor's. She can I'm do it. Say, she's her she's her father's daughter. That's for sure. Yeah, you don't got to go on more or anything like that. Just as soon as she did that, she was probably like lifting weights as a baby. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> she was she was bench pressing people when she was a toddler. <laughs> <laughs> she uh. She uh, drinks protein shakes. Uh, well, <laughs> instead of like formula, it was protein shakes for her. It's like, I don't think she needs this. I think she needs nonsense. Shake it up. <laughs> <laughs> she needs to grow up big and strong, just like me. <laughs> it's, like, it's like in South Park, just beefcake. <laughs> beefcake, except she doesn't weigh 3,000 pounds at the end of the episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. and, and I like uh, the... the the one guy who's interested in Helga and Helga's like, 
or not Helga, Yulva, sorry. Jesus. Yeah. Oh my god, that would be so weird. I want to say, could you imagine? <laughs> oh yeah, Thor's is dead, so... <clears throat> <laughs> May I introduce myself? <laughs> but no, there's that one guy who's interested in Yulva, right? And uh, yeah. Yulva's like... I don't know these things. I just do the work around here. It's like a security guard. It's like, it's like, uh, hey, security guard, do you know where I can find like the the the, uh, the the nearest Taco Bell? Hey, I'm just a security guard. I work here. It was like one of those reactions. <laughs> I love Yova. She can scold me anytime. Oh wow, Sasuke's getting really loose. Well, you know, if you ever pass out, Sasuke, she can pick you up and do a fireman's carry. Just put you up on her shoulders and just <laughs> carry you out. And then she can hit you with the attitude adjustment. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> just slam you down. <laughs> That's not a part of my fantasy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, carrying me. No, not the chair! <laughs> Oh my oh. God, he's broken it out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Abraham, for the uh, the super chat. I appreciate it. And you <gasps> keep up the positivity. Super chat? How much? I, uh, it says two G GBP. Two euros? Is that euros? Great Britain. Hell Great yeah! Country. Great. We're in Britain. the money. Ah, uh, we're in the money. <laughs> Pence? I don't know. I don't know what it's called over there. I only listen to like, I only watch Jack Frags sometimes. Uh, but uh, also, there's Helga. Helga's awesome. Hel Helga is, she's kind of like, she's she's a, uh, um, she's a good mom, I guess. That's probably the best way to describe her, really. But she's really weak. But she still, uh, she still tries a lot. Do you even think that she's still alive now that Thorfinn is like 11 years older? Because she was weak and sick back then. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mitch, Etchy Donut, for the, the... Oh, wait, no, never mind. I was about to say, okay, so I thought you were you donated two euros, and I was like, what? But yeah, no, uh, yeah, you, you bring up... <laughs> so I was just confused there. <laughs> Uh, EA, uh, I do wonder if she's still alive because she is weak and I mean, she even gave birth to two kids, so I guess she would be fine, right? When I mean, did, this, did this is the olden days. I don't know. I do know this is the olden days where modern medicine is not yeah. a thing, not very popular. <laughs> not very popular modern medicine was. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the the pre-modern days <laughs> back in the bcs in in the in the one digits the single digits back in the one digits <laughs> back in the threes man those are the days man do you remember the threes they were they were great i hate living in the sevens <laughs> those are some crazy 12 months those threes were but sevens make it those 12 months in the sevens make it seem even worse i mean it's funny to joke about that, but it's like people didn't live long, especially back then. Whether you die on the battlefield, you, you don't you don't see past like thirty or forty. You're you're an old man by that point. Speaking of old man, how about that Leaf Erickson? Woo! He is the MVP at the end. Well, I say MVP, but I mean he tries. He really does try, but you know. He he, he came so close, but he I, I really love that scene. Where he was talking about, you know, I'll never know what it feels like to be a soldier. You know, we, you guys have your honor. But me as a sailor, I too also have my honor. And I have an honor for your father, so Thor's. And, you know, I'm going to bring you back no matter what. I thought that was such a really good scene. And it's funny to see him bald. He, he, went through a, he went through some terrible 11 years. He had a full head of hair and a mustache. Ugh. And then just it all. I don't know where all that hair went. <laughs> I bet it would. Dealing with all that that he had to deal with. Right, losing a friend and losing you know your friend's son and having to. Ah, uh, yeah, that stress alone would make me lose my hair. 
I just like to think about like the stuff that we don't see on screen because like he's also a tragic character because think about not not even just him looking for Thorfinn for all that time, but think about all the money he had to spend just searching the seas for him. And this is the era where he had to sail and spend days, weeks, months, years yeah, looking for Thorfinn. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's not like he could just call Thorfinn and, hey, where you at? He had to literally <laughs> search for him. Get your ass search back here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that had to be a hard life. And I just think about, because he, of course, he was traveling with other people, and those other people were probably telling him, yo, Thorfinn is dead. It's been years. Just forget about him. And he just always had that belief that he was still alive. And for him to believe that Thorfinn is alive is amazing because, you know, when he was, when he uh, basically stole on Aslan's ship, he was still a young kid. So it's, it's very plausible for a kid like that to be, or, you know, that young to die. But he just always had to believe that he was alive and he would find them. So, you know, salute to him. I want him to yeah. be my dad. He would be a great dad, I think. So yeah, many he stories. Would. Yeah. He 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 would never give up on you. That's for damn sure. He'd be emotionally supportive and not at the store buying cigarettes. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> he went to go get milk and he never came back. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny, though, Sasuke, you say, like, you know, they didn't have the technology just to call Thorfinn up. Wouldn't that be really, wouldn't, wouldn't this, wouldn't it be odd if, like, history was, like, we had cars, but we didn't have phones, or, like, we had, like, ships, but we didn't have phones, or, or we had, we had all, the, they had all the technology they have, but they did have phones, so they're, so they could, so he, so Leaf could, could theoretically call Thorfinn up, but Thorfinn would be like, I'm in the middle of the woods somewhere. <laughs> it's like, oh shit. Not, not right Me now. Too. Not, not right now. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting this extremely tall man by the name of Phil right now. He's call me back. I cut his finger off. He doesn't look happy. Ah, oh, my guts. <laughs> my arm is broken. Uh, but yeah, no. Leaf Erickson is. He's awesome. I just love that scene. It's just I can't forget that scene of him just talking to Thorfinn in the in the when he's in the the, the cell because his facial expressions are just animated so extremely well and I was like God I can see the pain and grief on his face I don't even mm-hmm. have to see the uh, ten eleven years or whatever it was of him searching for Thorfinn and and all the anger she went through he showed it he showed it in yeah, that face does. and. Mm-hmm. You know, we joke about how, you know, he went from this man with a full head of hair and, and a bunch of stories to to an old man that, that was, you know, that's got the, he, he's, his hair just kind of fell off. Uh, but, I mean, that kind of does put into perspective a lot how, you know, er- Leif Erikson has, has changed and, and not for the better. Sure, he may not be as affected, maybe, as, as Thorfinn is because Thorfinn has a lot of hatred in his heart. And that's all he's ever known. Um, but Leif Erikson, you know, he's lived a full life. He's he's explored. He's done. He has a he has a lot of these stories to tell. That he's he's got experience in many different things, and I think that makes it really probably hard on on Leif Erikson to to see what Thorfinn is going through and how lost he is, and it's just seeing him in that that cell is probably just like. You know, he's probably cringing because, you know, the last time he saw this kid was he was bright and cheerful and happy. Yeah. Now he's all broken and blood on him and bruised up. That's a sight to see. And all of that really has to deal with Asklad, right? So I guess we got to talk about him. <laughs> the best character in this anime. Without a doubt. Yeah, yeah, I um, I did I really didn't want to like him at first. I, <laughs> I uh, I, that happens to me. It happened to me a lot in Game of Thrones. I, and it's weird how I compare the show to Game of Thrones a lot, but I feel like I pretty much have to because they kind of share some similarities in a way. But I absolutely 
despise this character. I'm like, man, this guy's a piece of shit. Just, just killing, killing this boy's father. I mean, obviously he's just doing a job, but yeah, I don't know. I felt like he did a bunch of dirty things, but I get it. He was doing it to survive. But towards the end of it, you understood why he, what he's been through, why he did what he did, um, how much he loves his mother, and the loves fact that life. loves his homeland too. He'll <laughs> die to defend it, <laughs> clearly. And um, yeah, this this man is God. I I I don't know so much if I like him. But I, I definitely, I, I can say that I know where he's coming from. And I don't know if it's respect that I have. I at least have understanding, <laughs> I, I should say. But I do like his tactics. He's a very smart man. He's a very smart man. And maybe that's why I don't like him either, because he's too smart for his own good. <laughs> but overall, I, I, I guess I like him more than I hate him. Towards the end, I especially when he was giving advice to Thorfinn after he whooped his ass and told him that this is if you're gonna fight, this is what you gotta do. And then he told him his whole story. And even if it, with his dying breath, he was telling him, move forward. You know, you can't hold on to this hate for the rest of your life because it's just gonna eat you up inside. Oh, and man. to be honest. If if this man never did anything right his whole life, that was the best thing he ever did. <laughs> you know, was was his dying actions. Like that was the best thing that this man's done for both him, uh, Thorfinn, the country of what? Wales. Duke? No, Wales. Duke? Wales? Where are they? Who's the king? Prince? <laughs> uh, I forget where they were in. Because they're because they're but... fighting England, but. I can't remember, but that place and it overall, that was that was his swan song. Yeah, I, I mean, God, it gives me goosebumps every time I think about that last episode where Asklad dies, and it's just like, I mean, you bring it up, like, can you really like Asklad from from like a, a human? point of view from a person from a person to person do you respect the decisions they've made do you respect them as as, as a person and and all of that and what comes with that uh i can't say i do but as a character as like a written character in a, in a piece of entertainment oh man it's so good because I mean, in many ways, it's it's uh, it's similar to kind of like Thorfinn of how tragic Asklad, his upbringing was because he, I mean, he, his mother w was too weak to work, and when she got sick, you know, uh, she stayed in a, a a barn, and that's that's, I mean, I'm not surprised to see they did that because that's something they actually did. Um. So, it, but, you know, it, it, and he would work, like, he would just be covered and just soot and stuff because he would be working all, all day, all the time. I mean, and then, then he killed, he, then he got his first kill, and that was, like, him, you know, that, that was, like, kind of, like, the start of the Asclad we know now. I guess. And I don't know, by the end, by the time he dies, like knowing all of his backstory and what happened to him, it's just, I feel sorry for Asklad, of course, in, in some sense of the word, because it was unfair in many ways what happened to him. But at the same time, Asklad made the decisions that he made. And I think... I think that he's just a really bad person. But when he's, you know, sitting there, he's dying and he's he's almost ready to die and he he tells Thorfinn to move on like you're like you're the son of Thor's, you can do better than this. Don't stay here. You you can accomplish so much better. It was just all of all of the stuff that happened before then. It was like 
it was like it just all washed away for a moment and you, and you, you just I didn't want him to die to be honest because he's such he was such a great character such a fantastic character um and it's it, it'll be sad to to see him go and not be around anymore anybody got so, it so, 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 so he drank himself <laughs> no no i'm i'm here <laughs> i'm here <laughs> I can't lie though. Right now, I'm like swimming like I'm Michael Phelps right now. <laughs> <laughs> but with Aslad, he's such a complex character. Um, like his hate for the Danes is so is we we just think about it, it's crazy because he spent so much time with them, and it's hard to it's hard for me to imagine that after spending all that time with somebody that you would still harbor this anger and hatred for them, but it stays so vivid in his mind and he never let that go. Pretty much the only Dane he, I guess he respected was um, his right hand man, Bonjorn. I think that was his name. Yeah. Uh, Bjorn, whatever Bjorn. his name was. Yeah. Named like that, the, that was pretty, artist. that was pretty <laughs> much the only guy he liked. But pretty much everybody else he was willing to kill. He was willing to manipulate everything and in between. And like you said, with his talk with with uh, Thorfinn, he wanted Thorfinn to have a better life because although he used Thorfinn for a majority of everything, like all the big tasks, um, he's, he, he kept that promise with Thor's to at least um kind of respect him in some aspect because he although he put Thorfinn in like these risky situations he still wanted the best for him he wanted like he he asked him like you know what do you want because you're just chasing a empty dream basically and now that you don't you didn't get, get to achieve it what are you going to do now so at the very least he kept Thorfinn in his in his mind because he could have easily just not have cared or you know wanted him to die whatever um but Aslad is a character that just has so many layers you can go through and it's kind of amazing because I I had when I first read the manga Thorkel was my favorite character uh, just because he was a beast and I just loved him and he was funny to me um, but after watching the manga and you know getting the content again, Aslad is probably my favorite character just because of how layer he is and how many components he has to his character. Yeah, he's not simply just straight up bad dude. He's he's a bad dude, but it's for sure. You know, it, it's he's so much more than. He's not even black or white. He's the whole freaking spectrum. Like he he's got like he's got these moments where he kills children, women, men in their own village. Brings them out in the middle of the, of the s snow and brutally murders them all with with no second thought. And then he also has these moments where he's telling Thorfinn to to live for himself, to be a better to, to be better and to not chase after whatever this is because now he's dead. Or these moments where he protects the people of Wales, his home his home country, or whatever Wales is Wales a country, I don't I don't know. Uh I think. I'm sure. Somewhere in it's, there. It's, I don't know. It's Wales. I, but before you go on, I just want to say, like, when he killed the villagers, what's interesting about that is he did it with no hesitation, but it wasn't without remorse. Because it's kind of like he's just so pragmatic. He's so practical in his thinking to him. It's just, we need the food. You guys are just going to take up the food. So, of course, we had to kill you guys. You, we, we had to kill all of you. That's just That's just how it is. It's not like he wanted to do that, but that was just the situation. That was the hand he was dealt. Um, so again, it's it's not that he 
was eager to do it like he was happy because that's what he hates about the Danes but he did it without no hesitation because for him it's just logical thinking just another day on the job for old ass glad yeah he's too old for this shit (laughs) (laughs) you're too close to the case damn it uh yeah I, he's just my favorite. He's he's the best. Like he, in a show full of really awesome characters, a lot of depth, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of characterization. Asklad is just hmm. He's something. He's something else. And uh, I think it's a great accomplishment what they did with Asklad, and uh, makes me excited for the future of what they if they could do this with just Asklad, just Asklad. Not even take into account everyone else in this season. What can they do with, you know, Thorfinn's story? It, it it's raises a lot of questions. It gets me kind of excited in ways that I don't usually get excited for anime. So you, you need to calm down. I need to calm down. I'm getting <laughs> my heart rate's rising. Oh, let's you don't get this excited when I text you late night. <laughs> I was about to say, let's have that the only thing that's rising out of you, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Speaking of rising and maybe being sexually curious in in the same sex, let's talk about Prince Canute. (laughs) Oh, yeah. That's actually a pretty good good segue. Good segue. Yeah, (laughs) good segue. (laughs) Because I have to... I've talked about it with you guys in the Discord server. Uh, I am strangely attracted to this man. Not only talking um, about character. I, I, I can't. I just, I'm, I'm like, God damn it. He's such a good looking man. I, I totally thought it was a girl when I first read the manga. When I read the manga, I was, I was like, wow, this girl is pretty. Then I just kept reading. Oh, this is a guy? Oh, shit. <laughs> Sexuality shattered. Yeah, I thought the same thing. And then when I thought he died, I was like, oh, he was a woman after all. And then it was a decoy. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I was really confused at that point when that happened. I was like, boo. I went, I went <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, did, what? I was... I was so confused. Was this? I thought it was one of those Mulan situations where they were pretending to be a man, but they were a woman. But yeah, I, it's I was make a man out of you, right? Right. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, oh, it's it was a decoy. Poor woman. Yeah, poor poor girl. She's she is not with us anymore. Yeah, she was just there for just to be a decoy, and she did not Ugh. die blissfully. Nope. But um, uh, I, I guess I I, um, I may be turning gay, but I think the real <laughs> question is: Am I turning Japanese? Am I turning Japanese? I really think so. Uh, I mean, <laughs> um, what can I say about uh, how do you say his name? Chinut. 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 Are we talking about Mitch? Who are we talking about? We're talking about the the man woman. Prince Chinut. Yeah, Canute. So it's like canoe, but Canute. Gotcha. Um, when it comes to this individual, I, when I first saw this person, how wimpy they were, I immediately was like, okay, this person's <laughs> supposed to lead a freaking country. Prince cannot. What the fuck? Yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> what? You see what? What happened? Do you see what? Mitch said in the live stream chat. No. Said no. Prince cannot. <laughs> Chris, oh, well. I mean That's how whatever, I feel whatever, about what, Prince Canute. Sorry. Continue well, Ian. You know, what whatever floats your boat, that's all I'm gonna say. But um uh basically what I was saying is uh I thought he was a useless character at the beginning. I'm like, oh we're gonna have another pretty boy who is too wussy to do anything, who has to have people wait on him hand and foot and, and, and you can tell that this person probably been spoiled their whole life and you know royalty pretty much but the the transition of this character of 
I don't know how long he was with Askeladd and crew, but for the short time that he was with them, he went from a boy to a man. And that's that's an achievement that achievement unlocked. Became achievement a- unlocked, you know, unprecedented and uh, whatnot. But when he started acting more royal and more like a king and not so much afraid. That's when I started to like the more. I'm like, okay, I see. We had to, we had to show his growth and kind of what changed him from, from that whole scenario. And after that, I, I started to like him more, not in that way, but just as a character, overall. So, I think he would make a really good king. Game I mean, hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, if you make a fanfic between me and Prince Canute. Oh God! I was, well, I was about to say he, he could make a good king, but what about a boyfriend? <laughs> well, he can cook. He can. He's good. I yeah, he treats you right. I want to say they're gonna have to find a queen just to be with him, only to have him, <laughs> only to have him in the kitchen. <laughs> It'll be a reverse situation. Right, right. It will be like, never mind. I'm not gonna say. Anything. You could just have. You could just call the fanfic. Prince can nut. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It should it should nut, Mister Nuts. <laughs> Mister Nuts. <laughs> uh, Beautiful. But yeah, Prince Canute's awesome. Uh, his his progression from uh, from boy to man, or as as they used to call it in the nineties, boys to men. You guys, remember mm-hmm. boys to men? I do. I remember that. Um. Yeah, I was about to say I remember that porno, but no, I remember the group. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, could, <laughs> you know when when Canute first shows up, yeah, I definitely was like, uh, I didn't even think he was gonna be that much of a character, and by the time like uh, was it Ragnar died? Uh, which by the way, Askeladd was like, gotta kill Ragnar, because that's what Askeladd does. He has to just you know. He, he's he, he's he like a Pokemon to... trainer. He has to kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just gonna say Ragnar may need like a nurse joy, a couple <laughs> for that gaping chest wound. Uh, I can they can like get a couple. I think they they clone those things. I think, but uh, anyways, <clears throat> yes, Prince Canute is awesome. That is basically everything EA said, but I want to I want to smash Prince Canute. Satsuki, what do you think about Prince Canute? All right, so yeah, I don't have too many positive pen- opinions on Canute, just because I remember when I was reading Vinland Saga, I did not like his progression to what we see the character that we see him at the end of it. It's not the destination I don't like. It's to again, it's the progression, and I thought. It was too sudden because I understand Ragnar dying was a drastic situation that would make anybody, you know, completely change. And we've seen it with Thorfinn as well. But I think I think the problem with me wasn't the the, the fact that his mindset changed. It's the fact that it was other details like once Ragnar died, Canoe all of a sudden knew exactly what to do and how to lead men. And that was just alarming to me. He was as soon as he died and he went through the phase where he was like talking to him, like the spirit version of him. After he got out of that realm, he was like, uh, <laughs> I don't know who was around him at the time, but he was like, you do that. You do that. He just like he just knew what to do on command. And it was just like a weird thing to me. Like, I felt I felt like he had to grow into that position, but he really didn't. It was just he just knew it and i wish we'd have got more progression to that again i'm not mad at his mindset i'm just mad that he just is like what what the like the good qualities of a king just came to him with the death of ragnar and i wish we just we just got a little more build up to that but i, I like the character that he is now um 
you know, I definitely don't like the wimpy canoe, even though, you know, cooking is cool. It's always cool. Um, men should learn how to cook. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, canoe school. God damn it, Satsuki. You're too good at this. Let's talk about Thorkel. The man who loves to throw logs and boulders. And, and he has kill in his name. Yes. Well, it's more oh, like shit. a kill. Oh, but isn't it pronounced Thorkel? Or Thorkel? Yeah, it's, it's, well, I mean, you know, I'm not the master of pronunciation, so I'm not going to say either way, but I, I prefer to pronounce it Thorkel. Okay, well, regardless, the man likes to kill. <laughs> this guy eats, breathes, leaves, sleeps, craps out, killing. I mean, he's just he's just all about that killing. I mean, I've never seen a man so upset for not fighting in all my life. I mean, yeah, you, you could say that he's a, a trope character because there are those people, or sorry, there are those characters in anime where they like to only do one thing. They either like to eat a lot, sleep a lot, or they're just a cinder metal up, but I can't remember one right off the top of my head. But this man, like I said, he just loves to fight. Gets his fingers cut off, and he tells the man to come back and fight me again. It's it's a it's a it's a, an amazing thing when you really think about it. But he's fun. He's he's definitely a beast. I I have to agree with you, Sasuke. Asklad so. is afraid of Thorkel. I mean. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, Asgard is like, <laughs> Asgard's like, oh, Thorkel's on us. Well, I guess we better go through just the worst terrain and weather imaginable because that's the only chance we have at surviving. <laughs> think, think about how how magnificent Thorkel is. He's a freak of nature. Like you said, Thorkel is a very strategized dude. He he can get around things even when he's disadvantaged. But when he seen Thorkel, he realized that he just could not deal with him. He is a completely different, <laughs> different person that he's dealt with. You can't, you can't deal with him with basic strategy, with elaborate strategy for that matter, because he could just break through it with his bare fist. Because he, again, is a freak of nature. He can literally render armies useless literally thor thorkel will go to the 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 losing team and say well i'll join these guys just because it'll be more fun and then he'll still win oh man who do you think would win in a fight thorkill or woon woon the freaking giant in game of thrones ah uh, I, I mean, mean... <laughs> they're probably re they're probably related, to be honest. Yeah, Doku's like, yeah, that's my cousin, <laughs> right? You're a little late, Goose. A little late. We're about an hour, ten minutes into this. Um, but we still got plenty of things to talk about. Uh, yeah, no, Thorkel is just a beast, a monster, a monster among men. If we're gonna pull more wrestling references, oh god, uh, he he really is. The Braun Strowman of this anime. Because oh. Braun Strowman tips over freaking dumpsters and, and whole fucking tractor trailers and is like, that was easy. Give me more things to tip over. I mean, is that not Thorkel? I, I would definitely say so. You you I thought you were going to go Brock Lesnar oh, for a second. He's like a, but... a holy matrimony of Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. Yeah, if they had a baby, out would come out Thorkel. <laughs> yeah. It, it, oh man. As they say, too much. Um. Yeah, that is Thorkel. Let's talk about let's let's, let's get a little, a little sad. <laughs> Bjorn's death. Um, this is a, actually a, a fairly big moment in the show, even though Bjorn is kind of uh. I say a supporting character and and that's probably honestly the best way to 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 talk about it is uh is is he is he is a bona fide supporting character that's not a bad thing because Bjorn in this episode his death 
I think makes a lot of of Asklad's character work in in these last handful of episodes. He uh he's he's basically sick. He's dying. There is nothing he can do. It's going to it's going to spread through his whole body and he'll die from a fever. So, he wants to to duel Asklad because he knows he's going to die. And that's how he wants to die is by the by a fair duel. And <laughs> Asclad, it wasn't much of a duel. Yeah, Asclad I mean, misses, to be honest, Asclad misses his uh, vital spot, and so his death is really painful. But we get a moment between them, which is really sad. <laughs> what did you guys think about Bjorn? Uh, but also, how Bjorn's death really played into this this series. Uh, I thought Bjorn. Uh, I don't know. I think he was all right. He was like the side character, and he was known for taking mushrooms and going berserk. What they call berserker mushrooms or something? I think so. Yeah, something like that. But you know, I was like, that was pretty cool. Whenever he would just eat that, and all his hair would just all stick out, and he'd just be throwing people into freaking wood crates and everything and whatnot. Um, but as far as like his death. I get it, you know, he's a Viking, and Vikings want that honorable kind of death so they they can enter into Valhalla, and I think that's what he wanted, and if anyone was going to kill him, why not a friend? And even though he called him, or he said he wasn't a friend at some point, because that's when he started, I don't know, killing everybody, he's like, please tell me I'm a friend, please. He's like, ah... Yeah, you're my friend. Even though I just stabbed you, yeah, you, you're my friend. <laughs> what can I say? And yeah, Bjorn, like I said, it's, it's okay. Man, EA, you're just like fuck Bjorn. Bjorn, does, I don't even give a <laughs> shit. He's just stupid. He I mean, have been in anyways. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it's it's not like we knew much about him. Like I said, he was just like a loyal soldier it's just that um his gimmick was that he took mushrooms and that oh look at him go i mean it, it, i guess it, saying that's a little unfair but at the same time they focused more on other characters than we did than we did bjorn had they done that maybe we would have known bjorn a little more <laughs> i mean you're totally right well, though but I, I think for me because this happens a couple of times with different anime. It wasn't like Bjorn himself that... Because like, with this scene, I fucking cried. Like, really? it wasn't... The, yeah, it wasn't B- Bjorn himself dying that made me cry. It was really the emotional interaction between him and Aslad. So I guess it's more on Aslad's front. Knowing that he does not like Danes and knowing how he did not want this to happen because Bjorn was his only friend. And for him to spend all these years with these Vikings, day and night, killing, plundering, drinking, telling stories, that was his only friend, and he had to kill him. He was the one that take him out and send him off. I thought that was a really beautiful scene. And the fact that Bjorn, you know, as hardcore as he is, like, you know, he's taking a berserker mushroom, was going wild. As hardcore as he is, the last thing he asks is, you know, or not what he asked, what he said to Aslad is, you know, I wanted to be your friend. So a lot of what he was doing, um, being his right hand man and doing the brunt of the dirty work, he wanted to just, you know, be cool with Aslad. And, you know, of course, with Aslan killing him, you know, that relationship went to a complete halt. So I thought it was very sad. Uh, they should do a dub over this where Asclad is, you know, holding Bjorn and Bjorn goes, my love for you is like a truck. Oh, God. No. Berserker. Please, no. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> I, I I hope overall that whenever because obviously this is going to get a dub but whenever they do do a dub 
that they use actual like Danish accents and English accents. And to me, that would be cool. Like actual voice Bjorn. <laughs> but ser- on, some, <laughs> on a serious note, I think it would just sound much more authentic. And don't get me wrong. I love this show the way that it is. It's a little jarring when you see a period piece in a different country and they're speaking Japanese. But I, I think that would just add it. It would make it cool. It would make it cool just to see just to see that, in my opinion. Yeah, no, they got to get Lars Ulrich to voice. Uh, like... got, he's all <laughs> Lars Ulrich. Because <laughs> Lars Ulrich is Danish, and so he's also the drummer of Metallica, in case people don't know. Yes, that. yes, but why, why him of all people? I want him to say in the anime, would, he I left take... the Fukin band. I would, I would, I would take fifty people that are extras in Game of Thrones over Lars Ulrich. I think that's literally everyone. I don't think anybody likes this idea. I don't have to ask Sasuke. He already hates it. I know. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, you bring up the dub and a possible dub for this. Uh, they there is an anime called Princess Principal. Uh, really good anime, actually. It's shockingly good. You'd look at, you take one look at it, and you'd be like, <laughs> like, like UEA. You'd be like, this is this is just stupid bullcrap. But it's like, but it's it's one of those. It, much like Prince Canute, don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> uh, it's uh, they what they did for the dub, and this is I think Sentai did the the dub for Princess Principal. They so Princess Principal takes place in England or like a alternate England, and so what they did is they just all did British accents for the dub, and it it was awesome, and it wasn't like some of it was kind of like there was one character I think that was the pip pip cheerio kind of accent, <laughs> but other than that it, it sounded really pip good. Pip cheerio. I actually recommend Princess Principal. It's really good. Um, do, you, do you recommend the Pip Pip Cheerio? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, but actually, the uh, the anime is about spies, in case you didn't know. Espionage. Um, so Mission Impossible? Uh, It's more steampunk. It's like really steampunk. All right. Uh, but uh, yes, I, I think it, for a dub for this... I don't. They probably probably won't be able to do this because it. I don't think there's any studio anime dubbing English dubbing studio in the world that could pull something like that off, uh, and it not sound like complete and utter total crap. Because I mean, what the the closest one is probably Okatron, and one of the L.A. studios, the one that Funimation uses, they could maybe pull it off. I mean, it would have to be Funimation that would have to pull a dub like that off, but I don't think they could do it, to be honest. Like, it would probably, they'd have to, like, get some professional voice acting, or not, like, some professional actors to come That's in. That's what I'm that. saying. And just grab everyone from Game of Thrones and put them in the show. <laughs> I would watch that. Yeah. I hope it does get a dub. Uh, Banana Fish got a dub, and that was a rec- that was a uh, Amazon Prime show like this was, and it's I think it's coming to Netflix. I think it may be already on Netflix. And Banana Fish, if you haven't already, you gotta watch Banana Fish. Banana Fish is awesome. Uh, but uh, I guess with that being said, we kind of hit the we've talked about literally everything on my notes. But do you guys have anything else you want to say? Hmm. I would definitely recommend the show. I think the show, it may not be for everybody if you're not into that whole violence thing or whatever, and you want to see your teeny boppers, go for it, you know, knock yourself out. But if you want something different that isn't the typical sort of anime, definitely check this show out because how many shows can you say are about Viking, animes anyway, that are about Vikings? Um, I can't really think of any other than obviously Berserk, but 
that's like the only one that really comes to mind. So this anime was a, a nice breath of fresh air. And I really enjoyed the experience. Now I'm just curious to what all those people were at the end of the last episode. We saw nothing but the back of their heads. And I'm guessing that we're, we're going to introduce ourselves to a bunch of new characters come second season. And that's what they're there for. Good. So that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I'm they make a second season. I'm, I'm watching this. <laughs> that's going to be what character? <laughs> I think that's just going to be our, our our like main our main characters next season. Really, you're going to you think they're just going to have new people? Yeah, I I think uh, they're going to. I don't know if I like that. I think they're just going to be like, hey, like we're just gonna we're just gonna call it Prince Can Can Nut Saga. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well. No, well, I, if they I, do, I don't think they're going to replace every one of them. I think they're just going to be like, because we killed a lot of these characters by the end of season one. So, sure, but um, at least keep the ones that are still alive. I'm happy to do that and introduce new characters at the same time. I just hope that they don't just have these characters. And I hate what there's some shows that do that where some of the best characters just don't return and then we're left with these side characters which now become main characters for some reason i'm like i did not ask this <laughs> why are these people here <laughs> but yeah i'm looking forward to season two if it's anything like season one i'm i'm looking forward to it very excited Sasuke, you got anything else you want to say um <clears throat> oh sorry i was looking through totally smashed <laughs> I was I was looking through some of like the Crunchyroll awards. I'm I'm on Twitter right now, and oh God. we'll talk about it. Let yeah, guess. we'll talk. Let me guess. Demon we'll... Slayer is pulling through with a bunch of wins. Listen, we'll talk about it because it's just <laughs> too much for me to complain about. But like the one thing I didn't talk about, um, I when we talked about it on the King of Anime podcast, um, before when we was when we were talking about this weekly, but. One thing I found interesting about Aslag it is um when he would swear something on his parents and he would when he would be willing to break the par with the when he was willing to break the promise he would swear on his father who of course we know he did not like but when it was a promise that he would wholeheartedly you know try to follow through he would swear it on his mother and I just thought that was like a real huh like cool detail that you could easily just brush past but it was just something that i found interesting that's how I much he respected his mother that. yeah wow. wow my mind is blown <laughs> but that's pretty much it i just want to complain about the awards <laughs> yeah we could do that um here in a second we we can do we can make like that like a whole segment so <laughs> make it its own video but uh for Vinland Saga in particular this show i mean i put in my last video on it um which by the way the reason i didn't do a review for it is cuz i've made like three or four videos and they're all fairly detailed so if you want to to hear like 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 what my thoughts are when i was really ingrained with this show and i could really tell you a lot of details about it go back on my channel on my youtube channel and you can see a bunch of videos that i made for vinland saga but in my last video i i gave it a 10 out of 10 on now and i i made i made that a segment in my video because i wanted to show that i don't give a crap about ratings and most people will know that i haven't had a rating system on my channel for about two years now because ratings are, they're useful, they're handy in the moment, but they don't truly represent how you feel about a show and, and the details and what, what makes this an 8 out of 10? Why, what are the faults? You, you can't name the faults, you can't name all the strengths in an 8 out of 10 or a 9 or, a, or even a 10, because even a 10s are imperfect. But I made that, I made that a, a segment because... This show 
if it wasn't for Fruits Basket, this would be my anime of the year, probably. Um, that and it'd be, it'd be tied. It'd be a three-way tie between Fruits Basket, Vinland, and The Promised Neverland. I loved all three of these shows tremendously, and this show made me cry multiple times. When I went back to edit that last video and I was talking about Askeladd's death, I cried when I was editing it because I had to rewatch that scene like eight goddamn times. And I'm not talking like crying like, you know, uh, just a tear. I'm, I, that is exactly what I'm talking about. I was doing the ugly face. I was making noises. My chin, my chin was like, sh like shriveled and weird. <laughs> Your chin looks like a raisin. I, my, I was, my face, my face muscles were quivering. I was like, "Fuck, this is hitting me not, not really well." And I don't know why that sounded like me explaining <laughs> or me describing drug taking drugs for some reason. But I guess you can. I don't know. My, uh, who cares? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, <laughs> Who's the drunk one again? I, yeah. It could be me. <laughs> Saucy's way more composed than I usually am. But, uh, I'm uh, actually not. <laughs> that's that's the secret. I'm not. <laughs> You're like the Hulk. <laughs> I. Well, well, composed as in like, like calm, but like when it, when emotional scenes happen, I cry like a bitch all the time. It's, it's, yeah. That's why you love Love Live, not because of cute anime girls, but because you are a cute anime girl. You get people. Um. But yeah, no, this, this, you know, if I could give this a rating, it would be a 10 out of 10. I would, I would say this is, this should go on like, uh, this should be like in like, I don't want to say it should be on like the Mount Rushmore of anime, but I fully believe that this should be on something that's like that. Like the, I, I have no idea. What... I know. How about simply one of the best of, the uh, 2010s decade uh, the best of probably yeah honestly probably yeah is one of the best of the tens yeah. for sure absolutely up there with you know with fma and stuff Stein like skate. That. oh absolutely this is this is like this is like anime 101 like if you're getting into anime this is one of the ones you watch for sure um oh this, my god this is a Satsuki, I saw it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, we'll talk about it. <laughs> I guess uh, this is where we're going to end this segment, but but stay on the stream because we'll be talking about the Crunchyroll Awards. I guess I don't know anything about. Yes, it. let's and, do it. Uh, uh, so, with that being said, EA, where can they find you? You can find me at everythinganimated.com forward slash bootycrack. Oh I'm God. just kidding. I was kidding. Just uh, <laughs> no, just uh, my uh, Tropic my Thunder YouTube, reference. My uh, <laughs> booty sweat, <laughs> but um, my uh, YouTube channel. I have been making more as of late. I appreciate everyone that's been subscribing to my channel. I am almost to the mighty three hundred. Aru, Aru, and I'm ready. I'm ready to I'm ready to take on 300 uh, subscribers. So gonna have some more coming up here pretty soon. Um, I know I'm gonna be watching Sonic here at some point, so I might do a review on that. Hell might yeah, review yeah, some yeah. other things. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, catch me there. I don't just do anime reviews. I do movie reviews. I sometimes just riff on popular things happening on in the anime realm or just the world in general. Sometimes I do vlogs. I drive and I talk to you, my phone. And I think I need a new phone because my vlogging videos suck. Sasuke, where can they find you? Um, you guys can find me on my YouTube making Kakaguri videos because everybody who makes videos on Kakaguri seems to hate it. 
you know, tired of the <laughs> negative videos, so, you know, got to get some positivity out there. Twitter, where you can find me bitching about the Country Roll Awards, and, um, yeah, no that's pretty much it. <laughs> I, you can find me on the Sea Tactics. I'll have an announcement soon uh, about another channel that I'm a part of called The Bento, uh, about that later. Uh, but uh, as for this show, this it will this is gonna be on this channel now. Uh, it only took forty nine episodes and a, uh, an extended hiatus, but it's it's just gonna be streamed live on on this channel, uh, and it will be taken down and re-uploaded, of course, because YouTube's live streaming system freaking sucks, and I actually want people to see these podcasts because they're good. Um, so yeah. Uh, also, follow me on twitch.tv forward slash ctactics, where this will also be streamed every Saturday, um, along with other podcasts. Every Basically, every podcast that I'll do live will always be streamed to twitch.tv on my channel there forever and always, because Twitch is, uh, is a fun platform to stream from. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll be coming back in the, in the spring, spring of 2020. Uh, I think it's I think the cat's already out of the bag uh, for ReZero Season 2, which is a show we'll be covering. But follow me at CTacticsYT on Twitter, and, or you can just subscribe and ring the bell because I will make, uh, I will make posts on Twitter and my community tab about the shows we'll be covering in the lead up to the King of Anime podcast spring 2020 season excited really excited for the show to finally be back even though we're technically back we came back last week oh and speaking of last week you should definitely go check out uh the last nakama club on modica magica over on satsuki's channel it's the best podcast you'll ever listen to besides all of our king of anime podcasts with that being said that was long-winded Thanks, everybody, for watching. See ya. Johnny. Later.